In the midst of uncertainty and turmoil, America's support for Israel's security must be rock solid. And as Iran continues to launch ballistic missiles while it arms and funds its terrorist proxy Hezbollah, we must stand with Israel. As Hamas maintains its control of Gaza and fires rockets across Israel's southern border, border we must stand with Israel. And as ISIS and civil war in Syria destabilize the region, displacing millions and threatening shared security interests, we must support all those affected by ongoing violence and terror, and we must stand with Israel. Our defense relationship is critical to both nations which is why I support the United States' commitment to provide Israel with $38 billion in military assistance over the next decade. With $38 billion in military assistance over the next decade. With $38 billion in military assistance over the next decade. It is why I support full funding for Israel, including for the Arrow, David Sling, and the Iron Dome missile defense systems, which save lives. And that's why I am fully committing to maintaining Israel's qualitative military edge. Publicly, uh, this has not been an issue that's, that's a priority for the Biden administration. In fact, foreign policy in general has not been a priority for the Biden administration. Uh, now, of course, in that respect, it's easy then to fall back on the traditional uh, response or position that the U.S. has always held, that uh, the, the two sides are equated, uh, that it's uh, usually, uh, there's usually a condemnation of rockets coming from Gaza, uh, and uh, simply words of uh, regret uh, at the uh, number of Palestinians who die uh, in any given conflict between the two sides. And of course, also the U.S. Uh, usually goes back to this idea of the two-state solution, even though by many accounts, many Palestinians will tell you uh, that the two-state solution uh, really has no merit when there is so little land left to claim. Uh, but that's what we know publicly. Now, what we're hearing privately, we know that uh, the U.S. media outlet Axios uh, here has been reporting that the Biden administration has, in fact, been privately uh, pushing the Israelis uh, to bring the hostilities to an end uh, and has certainly pushed them uh, on uh, putting a hold on these uh, evictions of families in Sheikh we do know uh, that uh, Biden's national security advisor, who had a call with his counterpart last Saturday, uh, that call uh, led to then that temporary hold uh, or the, the postponement of the hearing that the Israeli Supreme Court was supposed to have on the, the, uh, these forced expulsions. Uh, so there's certainly an effect, and we understand that effect is really uh, being led by the progressive wing of the Democratic Party.
This is the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Verse 8. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. I want to give all honor, glory, and infinite praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Achak, Wadash, double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Mostone, peace and salutations to the elect scattered abroad, pushing his truth and sincerity, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Achak, Wadash, Brak, Dum, to use a Karnian, Wa'akin, Wa'akwafim, you know, you elders, you brothers, you sisters, the hopeful elect out there laboring, keeping the commandments to the best of your ability, giving diligence to make your calling and election sure, and of course, keeping faith. And yeah, how will you how shy in these last days, in these perilous times that we're living in? This is Brother Pashai, Ban Yashala. And this will be a quick lesson through the spirit and probably how about Shimi Shai. You know, World War Three update, you know, wars and rumors of wars. We have China, you know, saying they're now ready to defeat the United States. You got a lot of things going on around the world globally. You know, that, that thing going on in Jerusalem with the Malachites and Palestinians. You know, um, we got Israelis shooting rockets at Gaza. You know, you got neighboring countries, you know, that's allies, you know, with Palestinians. You got Elamites, you know, burning the United States flag, the, the Israel, Israel's flag. You got, you got Kamala Harris over here, you know, um, the vice president over here um, in Babylon the Great, saying we got to stand for Israel. We're saying that, you know, Babylonians, you know, the Americans got to stand for Israel. And that's why they um, funding $30 billion um, to help. But um, they're sending $30 billion to Israel. You know, and weapons, defense and military weapons and stuff like that. Roughly, roughly paraphrasing what she said, you know. But in any event, we know what? That World War Three is around the corner. It's prophesied in the scriptures to happen and it will happen. Thus say, if you have Hashem, you shot. So I have this article pulled up. I'm going to read some of it, get some precepts. But before I read, any, um, read some of the article, let's, get, let's read this precept one more time. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. All right, so there's a time for everything. Right. And right now we're in a time of what? War, not the time of peace. Further proven that these Amalekites over there in the land of Israel right now that's calling themselves Jews, you know, Israelis and stuff like that. They're not the they're not the true people of the Heavenly Father, because as it is written, once the, the Heavenly Father's chosen people go back into that land, when Heavenly Father sent back the beloved son, Yahweh Shai, and he bring them to that land again, according to countless prophecies, you know, there'll be no more. Uh, there'll be no more war. You know what I'm saying? There, there'll be peace. You know, nation will not lift up sword against nation. That's in the book, of, I believe, um, Isaiah, the second chapter. It's counts of scriptures as well. You know what I'm saying? But that further proves that they're not the people of the Heavenly Father because they're in that land right now and there's war and conflict going on. You see? So let's read this again. Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Let's jump down to verse 8. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. And right now we're in that time of war. War is brewing up. World War Three, the war to end all wars. And it's closer than people think. You know, it's right around the corner. It's actually brewing up as we speak. You know, like I mentioned, it's neighboring countries that's allies with um Israel. You got, you know, America's allies with Israel. And you got countries that's allies, you know, with Palestine, Pakistan and other, you know, neighboring, you know, um nations. They're allies with um Palestinians. You know what I'm saying? And Turkey, you know, basically was, you know, um, upset of, uh, of United States response to Israel bombing, you know, and sending rockets at Gaza. You see? So let's read some of this article, then um, get a couple more precepts and close out. This is a World War Three update. You know, so as it's written in the scriptures, we got to be on our watch, be circumspect, you know, and know the time that we're living in. Right. So let's read this article. This article came out May 15th, 2021. The year of hastening until the coming of the day of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, right? Uh, and it's entitled Beijing Issues Deadliest War Warning Yet, right? As China declares it is now ready to defeat United States, also known as America, Babylon, the Great Man, you know? So now China, the weak, is saying I'm strong because in times past, the other nations was terrified of the United States, man, you know? But not enough because of all the technology, you know, all these different nuclear tests and everything like that. You know, they, they're confident that um, they could back up these claims, you see. And I believe like two years back, if I'm not mistaken, um, Xi Jinping said, let America fire the first shot and, we, and we'll be glad to do the next. So World War Three is about to pop off, man. You see. So it says China has issued its deadliest warning yet as Beijing warned that the United States will be defeated if the two superpowers go to war amid a tent 
standoff over the South China Sea and Taiwan. You know, because they're doing different um, drills, you know, over there. And basically, um, like the United States is doing joint drills with Japan, Australia, and France, you know, was, you know which is intended to show force against Beijing. But they taking it as like, listen, man, like, just, you know, do what you got to do. We're going we gonna to defeat y'all if y'all want to go to war right now, you know? So that's showing what? That war is brewing up, you know, between the nations as it is written. As a matter of fact, let's get the next precept. Like I said, I make this straight to the point because the video clips show you everything, man. You know? But I'm going to back it up with the scriptures because it's written in the scriptures, man. Let's read this right fast. Matthew 24 verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives... The disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming of the end of the world? Whose world? Esau's world. As is written in 2nd Edges, the 6th chapter, verse 9, Esau's end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So right after this war, you know, that, that pops off, World War Three. you know what I'm saying? Who's going to be the next in charge? Yasha Allah. You know, when the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, sent back his beloved son, Yahweh Shai. You see? So that's the time period we're living in, man. A transition between kingdoms, a wicked rulership to a righteous rulership, you know. So the, the disciples ask you how was shy, you know, some of the signs of the second coming and of the end of this world, you know, the end of Esau's rulership. Matthew 24, verse 4, and Yahweh Shai answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. And right now there's a whole lot of deception going on. You know, Esau wants you to believe that things are going to go back to normal. But guess what? He has a lot of things planned for this place. You know, like the cyber attack that happened to the pipeline. That was orchestrated by your own U.S. US government, man, to raise up the gas prices. We're going to also raise up the food prices. Was going to bring what? Inflation. Was going to bring what? Chaos because people are not going to be able to afford their food. Stuff like that. They're going to resort to what? Looting, you know, stealing and robbing. You know, so this is the time that we're in right now, you know? So there's a lot of deception going on, but guess what? Um, The elect cannot be deceived, man, you know? The scriptures say that what? If it be so, that if it be possible, they shall deceive the very elect. But that's not possible because Yahweh Bashim Yahushah, you know, as it's written in the scriptures, no man can pluck the elect out of the Heavenly Father's hands or the beloved son's hands, you know? So we ought to continue giving diligence, make a call and election sure, man. And keep faith in Yahweh Bashim Yahushah. He's going to deliver us during these times when things get chaotic out here, man. Verse um, 5, for many shall come in my name, saying I am Hamashiach, or saying I am anointed, and shall deceive many, a lot of false prophets and stuff like that. Verse uh, 6, and ye shall hear wars and rumors of wars, like we're hearing right now. And ye shall hear wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Now, the people of the world, when they hear these different things, and the majority of people in here in Babylon the Great don't know what's going on, you know? They don't want to hear about these things. They want to stay, um, what's that What's that saying they say? Um, ignorance is bliss. They want to stay in their ignorance, man. They don't even want to know, you know? So... When they hear about these, you know, different things, nuclear, you know, nuclear warfare, war about to brew off, you know, pop off and stuff like that, wars brewing up, I'd rather say, they get afraid, but not the whole full elect. We understand why this has to happen, you know? So read that point again, Matthew 24, and verse 6, and you shall hear wars and rumors of wars, see that ye be not troubled for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet, you know, the end is not yet, man, you see? So all these things must come to pass. Verse 7, for nation shall rise against nation. That's going to race wars. You know, you see that over there in the land of Jerusalem with Malachi versus the Palestinians. You know what I'm saying? That's nation rising against nation. Over here in Babylon, the great. You got nation rising against nation right now. Throw Black Lives Matter, Antifa, you know, Proud Boys, white supremacist groups. You know, it's going to be all out race wars very soon, man. You know? Then it says, what in kingdom against kingdom? That's going to World War Three, man. Kingdom against kingdom. Because we know Russia and Iran are allies, man. You know, and once Iran get involved in this situation and back up Palestine... You know, what, um, what do you think going to happen, man? U.S. going to be backing up Israel like you've seen in a video clip. Kamala Harris saying we got to stand for Israel. So that's the least of the flock drawing them out. Prophesied, I believe, Jeremiah the um, 49th chapter. I'm going to have to get that so I won't be mistaken. So don't quote me on it. I'm going to have to find it. Lower than I do. Right? So let's read that from the top. Matthew 24 and 7. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famine. So this famine is coming. Like I mentioned earlier with the whole pipeline issue and all of that. That could lead to a famine. Food prices going up. People can't afford food. Famine, you know what I'm saying? And pestilences, more diseases and viruses, and earthquakes in diverse places. You see? So all of this is around the corner, man. All of this is around the corner. You see? So verse 8 says, what? All these are the beginning of sorrows. It's just the beginning, man. You know, this is just the beginning. So there's a lot of things that's about to brew up on this earth, man. So yeah, you gotta be you gotta be on your watch. You know? So now I want to go back to this article. One second, Yashallah. 
Okay, Khan, so what's Jeremiah the 49th chapter? Let's read it right fast through the Spirit. Jeremiah 49 and verse 20. Therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord Yahweh, by Hashem Yahushai, that he have taken against Edom and his purposes, that he have purpose against the inhabitants of Teman, which is the, Germ the so called Germans, right? Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Who's the least of the flock of the nation of Edom? The Amalekites, the so called Jewish Israelis today. You know, those are the Malachites. That's the least of the flock drawing them out as she was going on right now. You know, you got, you know, you got these Amalekites bombing Gaza, sending airstrikes, stuff like that over there, you know, and you have United States saying that they um basically trying to justify it, saying, listen, they're allowed to defend themselves just on the third. And Turkey's not trying to hear that, you know, and you got Kamala Harris saying we, we're going to stand with Israel, man, which shows what that the least of the flock going to draw them out and going to usher in this World War Three. You see, because you got neighboring countries joining in, and then you know, all hell gonna start breaking loose, man. There's gonna be wars everywhere, man. Don't forget the things going on with the, in the South China Sea, which I'm reading this article in a second, you know? But you got United States, you know, you got Japan, Australia, and France doing different drills in the South China Sea, which is meant to intimidate Beijing, you know? And in and, and Beijing, China, Xi Jinping, whatever his name is, and saying, listen, man, if war break out, you'll be defeated, man. They're confident that they will defeat the United States in war, you know, right now, you know, in America, Babylon Great will be burnt up by fire. So this place will go up in flames, you know, as is written in the scriptures. So as we don't down, it says, surely the, surely the least of the flocks shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitations desolate with them. So this place can be desolate. Death and destruction is coming to the nation of Edom, you know, and all you nations that think you're going to rule next. No, you're going to captivity. You're going to slavery, man, under the under the nation of Israel. Once the heavenly father, Yahweh, sent back his beloved son, Yahweh Shai, that is a wrap, man. That is it for any nation ever ruling, you know? Y'all never get a taste of rulership ever again, right? So let's go to this article right fast, right? So the article is entitled again, Beijing issues deadliest war warning, yet as China declares, it is now ready to defeat the United States, right? China has issued its deadliest warning yet as Beijing warned that the United States will be defeated if the two superpowers go to war amid a tense standoff over the South China Sea and Taiwan. Let's read on down. China has pledged to rapidly defeat the United States in a military conflict in one of the country's most explicit warnings yet. China's Global Times, which is seen as a government news outlet, published an editorial revealing the threat in response to joint military drills carried out by the U.S., um, the U.S. joint drills with Japan, Australia, and France, so the joint military drills they're doing over there, this week is an, is an intended show of force against Beijing. So it's kind of meant to intimidate um, these Moabites, right? However, instead of backing down, China appears to have been rattled, prompting a fierce rebuke in Beijing's state-run newspapers asserting confidence in Chinese military su um, superiority. You know, so they believe their military is superior to America's, man, right, to Esau's. Right, so RT America's Alex um, Mahavik said the Global Times put out an editorial saying the U.S. would be defeated if any conflict broke out in the South China Sea. Many see the drills as a show of force aimed at China as Japan works toward cons uh, consolidating, um, cons consolidating Slovakia military alliances in an effort to deter its neighboring superpower. However, the drills appear to irritate China rather than contain it. Read on down a little bit more. He continued, according to the Global Times editorial, the United States will be defeated if it engages in combat with China in its neighboring waters. Right? The editorial also read the People's Liber Liberation Army doesn't even need to make pointed responses to the joint drills since it's um, insignificant militarily. Right? Former UK MP George Galloway told RT that this would prompt an increase in military preparedness from China. What is it? What scripture should I remind you of? Let's get it. Joel, the third chapter. Right. And I'll just link the rest of the article in the description box below. Right. I'm just rolling through the spirit, man. The World War three update. World three is around the corner. Joel three and nine. Proclaim me this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. What did the article just say? Let's go back to it. It says, uh, wait, I, I read right here. Right. It says former UK MP George Galloway told RT that this would prompt an increase in military preparedness from China. Let's go back to Joel 3. Joel 3 and verse 9. Proclaim me this among the Gentiles. Right? Prepare war. 
wake up the mighty men, let all the men of war draw near, let them come up. So these other nations, these Gentiles are preparing for war, man. That's why different, you know, military joint drills going on, nuclear arsenal being tested off, you know, they're preparing for World War Three. You know, verse 10, beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say I am strong. That's China. That's more bites. You know, because in times past, they was afraid of America, man. But now the weak saying I'm strong. Verse 11. Assemble yourselves and come all ye heathen and gather yourselves together around the bow thither. Cause a mighty ones to come down all ye how by Shem Shai. So that lets you know what? That the heavenly father, Yahweh, by Shem Shai is causing them to come down. He's about to gather them up in the valley of Yahweh Shapat, which is landed over there in the Middle East, man. Which you see is starting off at. Over there in Jerusalem, man. You got uh, Amalekites and the Palestinians. And neighboring countries are going to start, you know, joining in. That's what World War III mainly be for that, man. You see? Uh, verse 12. Let the heathen be wakened and come unto the valley of Jehoshaphat, which in the Hebrew is Yahweh Shapat, which means what? The Heavenly Father's judgment. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. The most I'm going to judge them, man. When he sent back his only begotten son, you know, Hamashak Yahweh Shai, our Lord and Savior, uh, as is written in the book of 2nd Edges 13th chapter, to be nothing left perceived but the but, but dust and the smell of smoke, man. They're going to get evaporated, man, because they're going to stop fighting amongst each other and try to fight against our Lord, which is also written inside the book of Revelation, the 12th chapter, verse 7, you know. Uh, they're going to try to fight against our Lord when we come back with the whole host of heaven on the right hand side, and they're going to lose miserably, man, you know. So verse 13, put ye in the sickle for the harvest is ripe. Come get you down, for the press is full, the flats, the fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley decision, for the day of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is near in the valley of decision. You know, so this is coming very, very soon, man. Let's get Obadiah the first chapter. Obadiah 1 verse 1. The vision of Obadiah, thus saith Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai power concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, let us rise, rise up against her in battle, right? Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen, but thou art greatly despised, right? So Esau is greatly despised amongst these heathen nations, man, right? Verse 3, the proud of thine heart have deceived thee, though that dwells in the cliffs of the rocks, whose habitation is high, we're talking the cliffs of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? So Esau's own pride is deceiving him, man. Verse 4, thou, though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, this will I bring thee down, save the Lord. Right, let's jump down. Where is it at? Is this it? Verse 7, all the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the, to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee. You see? And that's also in the scriptures as well, how the beast shall hate the whore. Because right now, of course, you know, America is thou great whore riding upon a beast. But then the beast's going to hate the whore. The ten horns going to hate the whore and burn her with fire. You know? So the men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. And on they that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There's no understanding in him. You know, shall, verse 8, shall I not in that day save Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah even destroy the wise men out of Edom? And understanding out of the Mount of Esau, which is the Temanites, which is the Germans. And thy mighty men, O Teman, shall be dismayed. To the end that everyone of the mouth of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. You know? So, you know, a lot of you Edomites are going to get put to death. And at the end of the day, after a thousand years, y'all are getting burnt up. Because any guy that survived World War III, survived the nuclear missiles, that fire, that brimstone, you're going to be the first crops of slaves. You see? So, um, let's jump to verse 15. I got like one more. I'm going to close out. Obadiah 115. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thy, shall return upon thy own head you know so the day of the lord is near upon all you heathen nations man world War three is around the corner as a matter of fact now we're going to get revelation the 11th chapter and verse 14 and it reads uh the second woe is past and we know the second woe is what world war two and behold the third woe cometh quickly so this world War three is about to pop off man it's coming very very soon so we as men of the lord the hopeful elect, you know, praying that we're part of our number of the elect, man. You know, we got to always be on our watch, man. You know, always be on our watch. As a matter of fact, we're going to get this. Uh, One second, Yashallah. Second Ezra, the ninth chapter. Right? Right fast. Let me pull this up on my tablet. Second Ezra, chapter 9 and verse 1. He answered me then and said, measure thou. 
the time dil diligently in itself. So we got to understand the time that we live in, man, the time of war and not of peace. Right. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that is the very same time when the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, and we see that, man, uproars of the people in the world, you know, then shalt thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. The Heavenly Father declared what? The end from the beginning, man. Verse 5, for like as all that is made in the world have a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest, it's clear that we're in the last days, man. Verse 6, even so the times also of the highest having plain beginnings and wonder and powerful works and endings and effects and signs and everyone that shall be saved. So during these times, they're going to let you know who's going to get delivered and saved. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith, whereby you have believed, man, faith and works go hand in hand. You see, faith and works go hand in hand because you show your faith by your works, man. You know, and, and that shows that you believe in Yahweh by Shemuel Shai. You fear him. Verse 8, shall be preserved from the said perils. So those who got faith and works are going to be preserved during these perilous times, during World War III, all of that. You know, Jacob's trouble, all of that, right? Shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land. You know, then in Jerusalem, which is going to get built back up after the Lord destroyed it. Right, and within my borders, for I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. So the elect were sanctified from the beginning to get delivered, man. So I pray this edifying lesson through the spirit and prophet Yahweh Hashem Shai. I want to give Kohalayim La Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, Hashem Machak with Dash, double honor to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Peace and salutations to the elect scattered abroad, pushing his truth and sincerity. With that, I'm going to say Shalom. Abad Babo. May Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, Hashem Machak with Dash, Babakshah, 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 Abad Babo. You know, World War III is around the corner, man. Shalom.